morning and I just want to thank you for being here sorry I missed yesterday for those of you that see my page on Facebook it was my anniversary 25 years didn't realize that was like a thing I got a card from my my uh, adopted mom Linda Montoya who said you know it's your silver anniversary didn't even know there was such a thing so silver anniversary there you go so I'm gonna go ahead and pray and get us started Lord, we just thank you for today. We thank you that we can meet here and we can get into your word and we can learn more about you. And I just ask that you would be with us. Fill me with your Holy Spirit as we talk about who you are today. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Miss Nika. All right. So we are in on our sheet, 30 names of God, right? And we're on day 15 of 30 and it's God is omniscient. So this means God is all-knowing. God's knowledge is encom God's knowledge encompasses every possible thing that exists and has ever existed or will ever exist and nothing is a mystery to him. He is knowledge encompasses everything that existed that is existing now and will ever exist. So nothing we do, nothing we say, nothing that happens ever surprises him. You know, sometimes we really think we can't be real with God. We can't show him our anger. We can't show him our fear. We can't, we can't be who we really are with God. And that's the biggest lie that Satan is trying to give you today, is that you can't be real with God. God already knows. You're not hiding anything from God. You know, the fact of the matter is that God has been around before, is, and after we will all exist. So there's nothing that surprises him. There's nothing that takes him by shock. I mean, when we can't be real with God, it puts it puts that between him and I. So we, we put those things between us and God because we think God is either too busy or God just doesn't understand. God understands. God understands everything that's going on in our lives. Why? Because he has always been. So there's nothing that's going to cause us, nothing that causes him to be like, oh my gosh, I believe what they did. No, he knows what we're going to do. He knows what we're going to say. Does that mean we should just do whatever we want? No. It just means that don't think that you have to pretend with God. We don't have to pretend with God. God already knows and God still loves us anyway. So be real with God. So our verses for today are in Psalms 139. And we're in Psalms 139, 1 through 6. Okay. So for those of you that don't know, what we're doing is we're reading through first. And we're doing the observation method. And we're just staying in the scripture. And we're just going to try and find out what God's word is telling us specifically from the scripture. Okay. And this is a psalm, which is like a song, and it was written by David. And in verse 1, O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. Verse 2, you know when I, sit, when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue... You know it completely. You hem me in, behind, and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. All right, so now we get to go back. We get to go back to verse 1. And we're going to stay in verse 1 for a few. Oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know me. You have searched me and you know me. We can't hide from God. He searches us and he knows us. Now we have spouses or we have children and we expect a certain amount of knowledge from our spouses and our children to know what we like, what we don't like, what pleases us, what doesn't please us. But really, that's not fair because the only one that does know us 
is God. And when we expect those around us to know us to that degree, and when they fail, because you're definitely setting them up for failure, nobody will know exactly who you are or what you're thinking but God. So what you're really doing is you're setting your loved ones up for failure because they will fall. They don't know what you think or feel. They can guess. But quite honestly, I don't even know what I think or feel half the time. And what I think or feel changes from time to time. But God knows those changes even as before they happen. Whereas those around us that we expect to know us, they don't know. Don't set your loved ones up for failure. You know, we... Like I said, we celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary, and my daughter was talking to me, and she was telling me about some things, and I, uh, I said, you know, you can't expect the same degree in relationships you have now as I have in the relationships I have with my friends or, or your dad. You know, as you grow, you learn to communicate. And as we change, we learn to communicate even better. And the better we learn to communicate, the better we learn that all communication is, is being real with people. Because when you choose to be fake and you choose to hide what you truly feel, you're not being real with yourself, you're not being real with others, and you're setting others and yourself up for failure. So be real. He searches us and he knows us. He's the only one that knows us. He's the only one that has, can search us because he can see everything that happened, will happen, and will always happen. Be real with people. Be real with people. He searches us. He knows us. Okay, so now looking at two through three. He knows when we sit, when we rise. He, good morning, Miss Nina. He knows when we sit, and Nika and Nina are both from His Very First Assembly from our church, so I'm glad to see them here this morning. Okay, so he, he knows when I sit, when I rise, what I think. From verse 3, he knows when I go, he knows when I lie down, he knows my ways. Good morning, Miss Nika. Oh, Nika's saying good morning to Nina. Sorry, I'm in the middle of their conversation, huh? Okay. Um... He knows when I sit and when I rise and what I think. He knows when I go. He knows when I lie down. And I've caught up my scissors. Okay. So he knows when I sit, when I rise, and what I think. When I sit, when I rise, what I think. What are you thinking right now? What do you think? Oh. Now they're, they're both having a conversation with each other. Nice. Um, what are you thinking right now? What are you thinking? You know, what you're saying is not necessarily what you're thinking, right? We're not always honest with ourselves or with others. And when we allow ourselves to be dishonest with ourselves and dishonest with others, we're again, we're putting that between us and God. We're allowing things to come between us and God by not being honest with who we are with ourselves or with others. God is calling us to be honest. God already knows. When we choose not to be honest, we're choosing to put that rift between us and God. And if we're not right with God, then we're not going to be right with others. Because the only way to be right with others is to be right with God. All right. So he knows when we sit, he knows when we rise, he knows what we think, he knows when we go, and he knows when we lie down. I don't know about you, I'm constantly going, but I know when I lie down, I'm out. But I know some of you, when you lie down, you can't sleep, and I know my husband's the same way. But you know what, he's there. The Lord is there with you in those times when you can't sleep, when rest just doesn't come. He understands all the things that are running through your head. He understands all those thoughts that are, are keeping you from sleep. God desires for you to lie down in rest. God desires for you to be able to find 
sleep in peace in him. But when you're not honest with yourself and when you continue to try and cloud your sleep with medication, with TV, with everything else, instead of maybe being in the word or being in prayer, you're just faking it. You're just pretending that you don't need God in that situation. And when all you really need is God in that situation. When you can't find rest and you can't find sleep, you're not going to find it on Facebook and you're not going to find it on TV. You need to be in the Word. You need to be in prayer. If you can't focus on the Word when you're trying to fall asleep, then you need to be in prayer. You need to be giving off the name of Jesus. You need to be asking the Lord and searching, is there someone I should be praying for right now? What am I doing here in this point of time that I can't sleep? The Lord is with you when you, when you rise and when you lie down. And if you can't find rest in that time that you lie down, then God is trying to get your attention for something. Focus on what God's trying to get your attention for so you can find rest. You're not in bed to lie down to do Facebook and to do TV. You're there to find rest. God knows that you need rest. Allow the Lord to give you the rest you need and stop filling your time with time wasters. I told somebody just the other day, I, I can't put my Bible on my phone. My phone is for me to do these live streams and me to quickly research something that I need. But when I'm in the Word, I have a Bible. I have a Bible because if I try and find the Word on this, then I'll get all those messages. I'll get a pop-up. I'll get this and I'll get that. And, and it really is just distracting for me to be in the Word and be on my phone. So whatever works for you. Figure out what works for you and do it because God is wanting to spend that time with you. God is wanting to be with you when you rise and God is wanting to be with you when you lie down. God knows your ways. You know, are your ways right with God? Or are you, are you contrary to what God is wanting in your life? Because we know his ways through his word. If you don't know what his ways are, then you should be in his word, right? Because there's no excuse for us not knowing what the ways of God are. If we're a child of God, we should know the ways of God. If we know the ways of God, then why aren't we doing them, right? And if we know the ways of God, why aren't we sharing them? And if we know the ways of God, why aren't, they, why aren't we teaching them to our kids? Why are we trying to teach our children what's wrong is right and what's right is wrong? That's how we know that the time is short because Everything that's always been moral and good is now evil in the sight of the world. And it's just going to get worse. Our ways need to be God's ways. We need to teach them to our children when we rise, when we, when we lay down, when we walk along the road. We need to be teaching our children God's ways. Why? Because if we don't teach our children God's ways, who's going to teach them God's ways? The world is not going to teach our children God's ways. And if you're waiting for that to happen, you might as well turn this off right now because it's just not. It's not going to happen. God has given you those in your life to share the word of God with because you may be the only person in that child's life that is going to share the word of God with them. It is your responsibility. You will stand before the Lord with what you did with your time and your tithe and your talent. And if you knew that you were supposed to share the word of God with someone and you didn't, you will stand accountable for that. And if you didn't know that, I'm sorry, now you know that. And you can't stand before God and say you didn't. So, and I stand with you in the same boat. I'm not giving, I'm not saying something that you, you know, I'm not doing myself. I know I stand accountable for everything I do as well. So as those that stand accountable for the ways that we have, Let's do the most we can with what we've been given. Are our ways in line with God's ways? If they're not, let's fix it. We're not here to condemn. We're here to build up. God desires that we, if we're right with God, then we are sharing what his ways are with those around us. Right? All right. Got a flower down. Here we go. 
raising money for women's ministry for our women's retreat in September. So if you would like one of our Bible bookmarks, please let me know. Okay. In verse 4. Before words out of my on my tongue, you know it completely. So God knows my words. God knows my words. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to say in a certain situation because as long as I've been prayed up and as long as I'm in the Word, then the words that are coming out of my mouth are God's words. I'm not going into a situation thinking, what am I going to say? How am I going to say this? How am I going to deal with this? I know that God is going to go before and behind me and He's going to speak for me. So I don't have to worry about what I'm going to say. I don't have to act like it's all about me. It's not all about me. It's all about God. And believe you me, God knows what he wants to say already. If I'm willing to be used by God, he will say exactly what he wants to say in the exact right situation, in the exact right way he wants to say it. It's only when I get in the way of what God wants to say that it doesn't happen the way it's supposed to. So let's not try and get in the way of God with what we want to say and what we want to do. Because if we get in line with God, we will be saying and doing exactly what he wants us to. Going before and behind us. Just like an army, right? And he's, we're not alone. We know we think we're in this battle by ourselves. Heaven's armies fight for us. God hems us in behind and before. We are not alone. If you're in the word and you're in prayer, God goes before and behind you to, to clear the way. And to make sure nobody attacks you from behind. We are solid. We are right where God wants us to be. God has prepared us and is molding and shaping us to be who he's called us to be in our lives and in our situations right now. So what are you doing to be right with God, to prepare you for the situation that you're in? Are you in the word? Are you in prayer? Are you searching the scriptures? Are you, are you doing what God has called you to do? where God has called you to do it. Only you can do what God has called you to do where God has called you to do it. It is your purpose. It is your place God has placed you. I know it's Nina and Miss Nika, they both serve at our church and Nina has been faithfully serving those young girls and doing Bible study with them for such a time as this. She may be the only one that is feeding into those girls' lives. But they will never be able to say, I didn't know, because she has now fed into them God's word. And now she will not stand accountable for what she did not do, but she will, she will be able to say, this is what I did do. This is what I've done for you, Lord. And he will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Miss Nika also, she serves in our youth. She's there with our teenage kids her and her husband. What a blessing. We all can't do what everybody else does. You know, we all can't be that person or this person. God has put you as you. You are supposed to do what you have been called to do. We can't do what other people have been called to do. We're, do, we're supposed to be doing what God's called us to do. And when we do what God's called us to do, then all of us are working together to accomplish the same purpose, which is what God wants us to do. So he knows our ways. Are your ways in line with God's ways? Do we know what God's ways are so we can't be with God's ways? We can only know what God's ways are if we're in the Word. Are you in the Word? Are you in the Word? His hand is upon me. His hand is upon me. It's not a bad thing. I know those of you that may have uh, been raised in a harsh household, someone's hand upon you strikes fear into you. And that's not what God's trying to do. God's saying, my hand is upon you. My blessing is upon you. I am here to, to steady you, to guide you, to restore you, to deliver you. My hand of blessing is upon you. As I go before you, as I go behind you, his hand upon you is not to be fearful. His hand upon you is to bring you hope in a future. So don't fear the hand of God upon you. Take comfort in the hand of God upon you. God loves you. And his hand upon you is a good thing, not a bad thing. 
And sometimes, of course, there is discipline and there is direction. Just like we have to give that discipline and direction to our children, because he's a good and loving father, he does give us discipline and direction. But it's not to, to cause us to be brought down, but it's to cause us to be brought up in the way that we should go. God is wanting to rise us up into who he's called us to be. And sometimes that hand upon us does give us direction and guidance. But it's not to bring us down, but to build us up. So take the hand of God's direction and don't forsake it. Don't think of it as harsh or unmerited. If God's hand is upon you, it's to give you that hope in a future. And it might be hard for a time, but it's not hard forever. God has given you that because he loves you. And I, I say this because I've had the hand of God upon me. I've had those hard situations where it seems like this is more than I could take. And God's not saying that. God is saying, I am here with you. I know this is a difficult situation. I know that you don't understand why you're in this situation, but I do. I see the beginning of this situation. I see you in here in the middle of this situation. And I see you at the end restored because of this situation. And I see the comfort that you're gonna give others because you went through this situation. God takes you through the situations that you're in so you can be a comfort to others. Be a comfort to others with the comfort that you've been given. It, don't forsake his hand upon you, giving you direction and guidance, going before and behind you because it's for a reason. God has allowed this to happen to you for a reason. Don't forsake it. And the last verse says, His knowledge is too wonderful for us to attain. I just shared before I posted this um, some verses on my Facebook page of uh, Satan's fall. I currently am going through the Bible with a, a, group, a group of friends from my husband's work that have never read through the Bible. So exciting. Such a blessing. And one of her questions was, are there verses on Satan's fall? And I didn't have the exact verses when we were talking, and I didn't want to go there because we're going through Genesis, and it wasn't a reference right there, and I, I just wanted to stay on task during that time. But I told her I'd get back to her. And it's okay to not have the answer at every point in time. Yes, we should have an answer to any every situation. You know what the answer is? It's Jesus. You need to be in the Word. You need to be in prayer. I will be in my Word. I will be in my prayer. And I will look up what, what I find. And I will give you what I learn. But I'm not expecting you to take that as the truth. I'm expecting you to get into your Word. Take what I say. And make sure it matches up with God's Word. Don't take what anybody says as fact. Take it to your Word. You should be always comparing whatever anyone says to the Word of God. Because if it's not in line with the Word of God, why are you taking it as truth? So I'm, I sent her that so she would be able to have a starting point to be able to uh, see some of those verses on Satan's fall. And, and that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to search the scriptures and, and attain the knowledge that God has given us. Because God has given us so much wisdom. Any answer you would ever need is in the Word of God. But any answer that we can't find in the Word of God is knowledge that we just are not meant to attain. We're not meant to know every single thing. If we don't know every single thing, that's okay. We're not God. And I know there's some people that just really have a hard time with that. They feel they should know all things. They feel they should be able to figure out all this. And you know what, if you could, you would be God. I don't know if it's, I'm just simple and I totally understand the fact that I don't know everything. I'm totally okay with that. I know some people are not. And I, I guess that's just where they are in their walk with God and that's okay too. We just have to be understanding of other people and where they are in their walks. And everybody is not at the same place. So take what God's word is giving you. We can't attain the knowledge of God. We can't understand how God can go before and behind us. We can't understand that he knows our thoughts and our actions before we do them. We can't understand that. We can say it. I can say all these things. 
do I understand how he does it? No. I don't understand how my car runs either, but I stick a key in it and I drive it. I don't understand everything. And I don't think God expects us to understand everything. God expects us to love him, to trust him, to have faith in him, to know that he is in ultimate control of our lives. I don't think God expects us to know everything about him. I think God expects us to have faith. Faith as small as a mustard seed so we can be who God's called us to be. So if we are supposed to be who God's called us to be, we can't do that without God, right? And unfortunately, there's those around us that don't have God that we're sharing this with and they don't understand what we're saying. And it's because they might not have that relationship with God yet. Do you have Jesus as your personal savior? Do you have Jesus as your personal savior? Is Jesus the one that's guiding and directing your life right now? Is Jesus the one that's saying, I'm here. I love you. I'm calling to you. I desire you. You are my child. That is what God is saying to you right now. That's why he is omniscient. Because he loves you. Because he wants you to know that it's okay. Exactly how you are. I love you. Exactly where you are. I love you. Exactly what you've done. I still love you. And I'm going before and behind you. Come to me. And I will love you. No matter what. So we can admit. We, ad we can admit we're a sinner. We can admit that we've fallen short. We can admit who we are because he already knows who we are. When we admit it, we're admitting it to ourselves. We're saying, I accept that this is who I am. I accept without God, I'm, I'm doomed to hell. But with God, with God, I can believe in a hope of heaven. I can believe in Jesus and know that I'm a child of God. I can believe in Jesus and know that I am saved and I am righteous and I am holy and I have plans and I have purposes that God has set in motion for me since before time began. You are precious to God. God has a specific plan and purpose for you that he has set in motion and he wants to accomplish that in your life. When you give your life over to him, he's asking that you would see confess, confess that he's Lord. Tell other people about Jesus. Live your life so others will know who he is. Speak life. Live life. Be who God's called you to be when you rise up, when you lie down, when you go here, when you go there, when you allow God to go before and behind you. Confess who he is. Don't take credit for it. Don't say, you know, you're right, I did amazing thing. No, you're nothing without God. Confess who God is in your life. God desires to do an amazing work in you if you allow him to if you allow him to God can do an amazing thing in you today God wants to do an amazing thing in you today what amazing thing is God doing in you today how are you allowing God to work into your life his plan and purpose which is far greater than you could possibly imagine better than any plan and purpose that the world has in motion for you is God's plan for you because you know why because it's eternal God's plan for you is eternal any plan that the world would have for you is temporal and it will fade only God's plan for you is eternal so what eternal plan has God put in motion for you today and how are you accomplishing it how are you setting in motion something that will last for eternity God has put you in such a place that you are part of God's plan today what an amazing opportunity to be part of an eternal plan. You have a very specific purpose today. Accomplish your purpose today. Accomplish your purpose today. God wants to do an amazing work in your life. And even if it's just making little bookmark flowers, do it with great awesomeness, right? Do it as unto the Lord, not unto people. I've even been able to start making these and I uh, gave them to some of the youth so they could raise funds. Some of the, the good girls, let's just be very clear. I have some of the girls 
and I'm halving the profits with them so they can raise money for their their things. That's how we come alongside each other, right? Come alongside someone today. Share God's love with them. Don't keep everything to yourself. Allow God to be in your life who he's meant to be. I pray that you have a blessed day. Thank you for sharing your time with me. And I look forward to seeing you this afternoon when we go through the Word of God with River. I'll see you guys later.